How was it working with Motown? Because Motown was at his peak at that time. As Absolutely, well. man. And the great Barry Gordy. Man, the Motown experience was like huge. You know, uh, we would be in the studio and in walks Stevie Wonder and sit down and start playing the piano, man. You know, we just like, yo. Know, I mean, this is early on before some of the big hits that we know today happened. And he would just be going through some sweet, mad, crazy chord progressions and saying, you know, he, I remember him coming to, being backstage at our live, the live, the Commodore's live album was recorded in 1977. I think we might have been somewhere in Texas and he came to one of the shows because they had, they had reps in certain areas and then, you know, they would be on, uh, you know, different Motown acts would be on tour. So it was a whole, you know, congregation of acts, you know, being in each other's flow and, you know, just, you know, in each other. But the Motown studios in LA were a place where we called Mo West. So it was Motown on the West side. So that was in Hollywood um, off of uh, Santa Monica Boulevard, which was crazy at the time. It was right when the whole <laughs> flip thing started happening. And, you know, you'd be like, what? And then, you know, right, Poinsettia and Santa Monica. So that studio was in that area. So there were three, three major, three main rooms at Motown Studios. It was sun, Sunset, Sunrise, and uh, Sunset, Sunrise. And Don, there was a little studio down. Oh, it was actually four. And then another one upstairs that Smokey used to record in a lot called Twilight. So there were like three, four rooms, you know, that were significant creative spaces for all Motown acts to come, you know, and record. They would book the time. There was a dude named Guy something. It was the, I forget his last. I remember that because I was paying a lot to the whole recording process thing, which kind of shaped who I am today as a technical, you know, producer and, you know, into that whole studio environment as a creative person, an artist and, you know, engineer, producer and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, it was, uh, we would see anybody at any given time. We were good friends with Jermaine. He would come by running around, you know. Jermaine would look like he was always looking behind his back, you know, watching, make sure he didn't, you know, because he did the, trans that was around the time he did the, trans we're talking like 78, 70, 77, 78. 79, that was when he did the transition from the Jacksons to a solo career at Motown by himself because of Hazel Gordy. He was married to Hazel, ah. Barry Gordy's daughter. Right. So he made the break from, from his brothers as a solo artist on Motown. Ah. That's why Randy was in the group. There was no Jermaine for a while when the Jacksons were the Jacksons on CBS. Why was he looking over his shoulder though? Was because it, coming at him? Well, you know, man, that was big money. That's a big money move right there. With one of the Jacksons leaving the group and still being with Motown, he was always like that. You know, the mafia thing. Man, man, the, the like you hear the stories and you're like, nah, but it exists. Who would have came for him? I, don't I mean, man, you know, it's money, man. You know, when people's money gets affected, you got certain promoters, you got certain. Oh um, man, um, you got you got a lot of big money people that. All of that affects gotcha. when when a creative person says, no, I'm not doing that or I'm going to go over here and do this. And the deal doesn't happen because it, I mean, there's I don't know he but he could have, you know, Jermaine was he was he was he was cool, man. He was cool. I always looked up Jermaine because I thought I loved his bass playing and his singing. As a musician, that's what I always, you know, right, was, right. Was, was really cool on. But a lot of people don't know the Commodore's break was opening up for the for the Jacksons. And check out my sax album, Sax Experience Number One, The David Cochran Experience. Mm -hmm. 